Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Potter's Resort here in Norfolk for the Just 2021 World Indoor Bowls Championships. Coming up very shortly where we have another fantastic game for you so let's have a quick look. And now let's have a look at the order of play for the rest of today. to the next game our match officials are as follows and now ladies and gentlemen very shortly we'll be handing you over to the commentary team of the BBC For this, the semi-final match today is from Scotland, a man who has five national titles. He's the head coach for Bowls Scotland and holds 13 WBT titles, including the Welsh Open, the Scottish Open, three times World Open Pairs and three times World Mixed Pairs titles and is a World Open Singles Champion. The world ranked number seven, David Gawley, MBE. His opponent for this match is, has won 12 National and British Isles titles. He is three times consecutive International Open champion, a World Mixed Pairs and two times Open Pairs world title holder and previous winner of the Open Singles competition, giving him 12 WBT titles. He's number six in the world. It's England's Greg Harlow.
lovely to see Greg so in the mood and up for this, and he has to be because he's up against a top player in David Goulet. Don't forget, Mark Dawes awaits the winner of today's semi-final in tomorrow's final. Uh, don't forget also to send in your questions or comments to the team using the hashtag AskCorky or BBC Bowls. And let's join that team now, John Price and David Corkill. Thank you, Rishi. All the history between these two players goes back so far. It's uh, unbelievable. Played each other 14 times. Jack length, 27 metres. David Gurley's 8 6 up on that particular head to head. The matches played on the World Bowls to Greg Harlow 189. 130 of those. David Gurley, well, 207. And he is 1146. So just two games between them in terms of the games they have lost. Both very similar ages and both linked together in terms of number six, number seven in the world. So realistically, there's so much similarities between these two players, John. It's probably why no one's prepared to call a winner. That's right. You'd expect it to be close. They'll know each other so well. David hasn't reached his best form, it's fair to say, during the event. Greg's had a few problematical Hyde. moments as well on the way, so they'll be both looking to improve, David, on, on oh, performances in previous rounds. Absolutely. It's uh, been very much Greg going down to the last bowl, and um, that was the case certainly with, with Julie Forrest. He had all the first uh, set, 7 6 a second. Before that, Andy Thompson, the tie break, lay a match lie. Greg drew the shot with his last ball again. Did you say two feet? Two feet, yes. yes. Your back bow for one. And of course, just when we're talking about those things, quarter final, Greg got through by uh, one shot against Stuart Anderson. So he's been really, he's playing well, but every single game he's been pushed to the limit. Yeah, I think that was his best performance so far against Stuart Anderson in the singles. He certainly played well in the pairs final, but certainly in the singles, that was probably his best performance, could have to be against Stuart Anderson. Such a good player. Bit of a loose Eight start, short but, of Jack uh, Greg's tightened it all up in the third bowl. Well, that so often happens. A player puts a good ball in, and the other player one red responds. Ball, Decent second. Short of Jack High. through a little bit nothing well, on right. here really for David except the draw John has got no back position can we play the draw on the forehand very gentle touch on the ball it's going to be hard for David to get the shot with this I wasn't too anxious about it. Movement of the jack wouldn't have been clever. One shot, Greg Harlow. Sketch set score, one zero after one end.
Jack Lake, 26 metres. What's been Greg's preferred length from that sort of 24 to 26 during this tournament? Hasn't been going very short. He's been keeping it round about that sort of two metre if he can, uh, short and long in his mind. And that's why, because he's getting good balls in. First delivery. Yeah, very good reply there. One green. One green. Positive draw. Good weight, just coming on the inside. Preferred to have been the other side because he would have drifted through a bit. Would have Four been a inches good in front of Jack Eye. No need for David to change if he doesn't want to, but uh, it's all down to personal choice. Just enough. Two green. Now inside on the mat, that means Greg's playing weight. thing about going with a third ball is with that sort of pace John if you miss it you've lost it which means there's no back position he's probably gonna to have to try and play a different type of shot or just draw with his last ball yeah I think so David nothing really on with the strike now for him Anything behind the jack would be really good here. Mm, not quite. And this is back on the backhand side to the draw shot. Overplayed. It was a fairly classic end in terms of the way you, the shot selection was that end. You know, Greg, go with the third recovery ball with the last, but if you miss, uh, a bit of bother. So David's got a chance to add another over yes. the third. Good opportunity. No, he's not up. Not up with this one. Not reaching. Didn't seem to put a lot into it. Two shots, David Gurley. Sets goal, one, two, off the two ends. sure about this one they're just going to check if it's going to be the full 23 meters it must be very close normally they can tell with the dots along the rink sounds like that could do with a little bit of engineer's oil but squeaky
one of those metal automatic ones, John. You have to be very careful. You don't get a finger taken off with them. Give you a nasty little slice, those things. Industrial injury. So it was just up the 23 meters. watching these balls we've got a perfect position from the commentary box and David Gurley's taking a much wider line than Greg and yet they're both using very Just strong over two and a half balls. feet past Jack High. but it's on the delivery on the forehand see Greg he's across the line just slightly wide of the leg so he's able to hold the ball up on a with less, uh, less green David Gurley, well, it's completely different the way he actually gets the ball away. One red. Similar position on the mat. He comes in to the leg much more before he lets it go. One green. Shot ball, last delivery. And the shake of the head from David. I understand he probably thought that was a lot closer. Same ball from Greg. A little bit further, actually. First down was a bit like this. Nine-end sets, of course. Two of them in the semi-final. That will extend in the final to 11. A three-end tie break. It stays the same. Let's drop back in. May have made the second shot. There's plenty of room there for Greg. It's a long way away. In real terms, it's a long way away. But the backhand hasn't been very successful. So. With the change here, Greg's going onto the forehand. I think probably David will the next time in this direction. Yep. No mistake. <laughs> players are just chatting to each other there, thinking, what on earth was that all about? One shot, Greg Harlow. Set score, 2-2 two, two after yep. three ends. And I just have no laugh about it, you know, just... You, know, you do get ends like that. I think there'll be a bit of chat in this match all the way through, John. I think these guys have known each other just for so long. Yeah, and I think uh, it's been typical of the event, really, and I think that's something to do with the fact Jack that Lake, it's been behind closed meters. doors, there's no audience, so a lot of players do like that little bit of chat to break things up. Inch and a half cap.
That's very good there. Good start to this end for Greg. Yes, it seems to be an easier way to uh, get to the centre line with good weight. Strange, really, because I've never seen that before going the other direction, being a problem. Good ball by David. Good reply. Yeah, perfect connection on that. He moved the ball without the jack. Greg will use one of his timeouts. He's carrying the ball up. There's that's the connection. Little push on time the red. Greg has four timeouts remaining. I think Greg may be tempted when he looks at it to change to the forehand side. He's got to get under the green ball. There it is. If he did get under the green ball, he may trail the jack. He may indeed, but it's just the, the front ball is a slight problem. If he gets into that, John, it's just getting back inside the, the green ball at the front. If he, tr if he travels a little bit, he's got this red ball at the back, which is uh, perfectly positioned to come into play. He's going heavy, decided to bowl out clean or jack in the ditch would be better. Big gap. Well, he's committed himself really, John, hasn't he? So David needs, the problem for David is he needs another bowl in. Yeah, I think I wouldn't leave the, the green alone in there. He'll just play in again. He could go deep, take a chance. He's got the last ball, so that could be the recovery. But Jack ends up in the ditch, but he doesn't want to try and draw with his last ball to save two shots. Needs to run with this. Doesn't change the end at all, so he may be tempted to go again. Well, you know from where he's standing on the mat, he's changed onto the backhand, trying a little trail of the jack with this one. In the middle of the mat. He's able to hold that tightish line. Oh, it could be. One green. Confident call from marker Neil Bryce. He's been given the responsibility of the semi-final. First time in his official career, so it's a big game for him too, John. Yes, it is. A game for David Gooley as well, looking to get back to the red ball. Always very difficult to draw another then. Want any movement on the jack? Played the safe line. One shot. Six one. Set score two three after four ends. Jack length, 24 and a half metres. David sticking with the backhand. Slightly different length, but uh, that's a lot better.
Two inches behind the jack. That's just about as good as it gets on the first ball. Yes, I think so. Everybody who plays singles will know front touch or back touch is the ideal start. Not easy to get there though, Dave. No. And that last ball of David Gurley is not, not going to help if he has to drive his way out of trouble. It's good again. Has to get the centre. Two red. How far shot is that, please? Normally, David Gooley will attack this. Two and this. a half inches short of Jack Eye. Two bowls. Well, the red ball's just peeping his head out, so I think if, if Greg can either tap the ball down, if not, just another ball in because the two could disappear. It's to run now, get the centre. Nuisance value. Three red. be very hard for David to negotiate through the gap, John, to get this. He might play it because there's two balls to be hit in, but it's uh, it's not easy. He may go to the forehand and try to draw, I think, instead. It's on the forehand line. He picked the line, but again, a couple of feet of weight. You meet there. How often have we seen that, John? Dropping short, change onto the forehand, both directions. Don't know why it's happening, but uh, players so often are dropping two or three feet short. This is a big chance for Greg to add another for full house. Good enough. David asking for a measure on the next one. <laughs> Four shots, square card. Set score, six three after five ends. Very big end there, full house. It's always massive when you pluck out an end like that. It was a, a poor end in real terms with David Gurley. The short ball was always going to be a problem, John. As soon as you drop you know, a couple that of feet short. Six yeah, playing in this format, I mean, most players will tell you if you can keep that sort of three or four off the card, sometimes that's what will cost you the set. Often in these games, you can go back and look at the scorecard and you can say, that's where I lost it, or I won it. Needs some Bounce back straight away, David Goulet. And that's good. Very good.
the gap of the shot, please? Six inch gap. No follow up, John. That's. Uh, you start losing those as second ball, the last end, caused them a lot of trouble. Yeah, I think it's about the second ball. If you can get past the jack in a position like that, you've got a good first ball in there, and if you drop a couple of feet past. Yep, you know, play a deliberate shot. I know it's easy to drop short, but really that's a long way away. Oh, great. You know, at the very least, that back red ball should be a target now. David knows that, of course, but... You know, can't play good balls every single time. Well, the chance here needs to take this. Dear me, I don't think he's reaching. Mm. He's a better baller out there. One good one, two poor ones. The good one, well, fortunately for him, it's only six inches away from the jack. It's beatable. But it's still good. Get past the green, Greg. It's just inside the line, though. Uh, One green. Well, it's a correction, isn't it, John? You have to give it a chance. Better attempt then. Needs to drop. Yep, needs to drop down to give any hope. That's, that's strange. That's the one ball he wanted to drop, and it hasn't. One shot, never good. Loose end. Set score, 6 4 after six ends. I'd like to see the, the battered old jacks there on screen. They're the practice jacks, John, that they use. Had a bit of a hard life, that one. Jack length, 28 and a half metres. Needs to go back for a refurbish. Respray. Green player using the yellow mat. And the red player using the red one. We keep everything as sanitised as possible. And the jack is sanitised every end, of course. There are two jacks out there, so the clean one is put up for the players to use. The other one's taken away and cleaned. I think it's fair to say, John, that the players have much appreciated everything that everyone's done here at uh, Hutter's Resort and with World Bowls Tour. Caution's put in place and... Uh, very, very well managed. Yes, I think so. As much has been done as can be done. Oh, David, you have to get these short balls out of your arm. Well then, David, slight adjustment on the weight. That's a lot better. Gets to the jack. One green. A little bit firmer with the weight down from Greg, but he's gone to a good place at the back. Ideal ball from David Gooley is to get to the jack and turn it again. He um, misses a foot through. Yep, absolutely. The red ball is the target. She just doesn't want to move the jack. Oh no. Oh no. Oh yeah, it's happened. Oh, that was unlucky. He played Hungry. a brilliant ball, but it's not so much that it's only the one shot. He brought the jack into the open. Yeah, and that's 
uh, Greg's last ball went, you can see he just dropped off the green. He's moved to Jack. Now, Greg's last ball, that was the track that Jack is on. Exactly. He has to repeat his last ball. Wow, that was close. He did repeat his last ball and it, it just held off the jack. Probably just a foot more weight on that, that last ball. That's probably why it held off. David has to change the head. He must make some sort of a change. If he's not going to play cover... Sorry, Greg, can I see the side peg? Yeah, he's just asking to see the side peg. Greg was just in front of it. It's a yellow peg in the extreme of the rink. Some players take their line from it. It's past, he's good. Yeah, I, think, I think that was a deliberate shot. You know, if you got the red ball, the pressure was on. Have you missed it? Position. Yeah, a decent place. It all depends really how. Greg's playing it again, which I think he will. How he catches the jack, the angle. Gets the right connection, he could score three. Really want it solid. Let's get down to the jack. It's Very close. time. Yeah. He just took the weight off, John. Played better weight. More controlled weight. Makes the double. Two shots, Greg Harlow. Yeah, just dropped that so eight or so eight weight off. Seven David knew that you know he couldn't cover everything. He wasn't going to change the shape of the head by turning the jack. He left it open. And Greg, having just missed it, managed to correct. Four up. Two ends to go, not guaranteed, but it's a nice little cushion. Yes, it is. And I think uh, in any game between well-matched players, I think that four lead, that you take that every time with two meters. to play. This is now all about game management. Just trying to close down this end. You won't mind David getting a single, but no more. And if Greg gets a single, well, the set's over. So it's nine ends, and the maximum you can score is a four. So Greg gets one, you go nine, four in front. Just for our non-bowling viewers. One green. Gap, please. Four inch gap to the shot. you want to do when your opposition is looking for multiples just close the head down on green yeah very good second shot still one down good ball there takes the backhand away david's slipping onto his forehand side now David dropped that one because anything through the head give him an option for goal on the jack. Right. You've been thinking about playing that later in yeah, the end, John. Yeah, and Greg setting up on the forehand side, which is just he's going to just play the lift into the split. Been a very gentle draw there. Yeah, but the thing is, if he misses it, he's getting onto his own ball. Spits those 
Balls yeah. on that side. There's not a lot on you for David Goulet. Yeah. You do well to get a single out of this end. If he wants more than a single, he has to play a, a risky shot, which of course would cost him the set if it goes wrong. But he could go a little bit deep here with this one. And then think about his own ball onto the jack. And make two or three. The problem with going deep with this is that Greg will just cover it. Trying to draw another off the side ball. It was a tough shot. I could understand why he was playing it, but this is exactly the sort of head that Greg wanted. Really tight, very good second ball in there. Yeah, Greg's one downer. Just wonder how ambitious he would be. There's a shot on his backhand just to draw through that split, yeah, turn the it. red into the jack. Or I think it's a fairly safe shot, to be honest. If, if you're only carrying a foot or so. Timeout call. Greg has three timeouts remaining. Players are offered uh, five timeouts, of course, during the first two sets. Additional one arrives in at the tie break. Both these players will, will manage those very well. He's pondering whether he wants to play this. I think it's fairly safe. If you're just using yeah. drawing weight into that split or if you get the red onto the jack, can't see too much can go wrong. One down anyway. Famous last words. Yeah, but... I think you're right, though. You can't be too negative, can you? No, I think you're right. He's either happy to go into the last end, three shots up. Or try and win the set, but he's going deep, so he's obviously thinking David would play ball on the jack with the run through for two. Now that, that would have been ambitious. Sort of covers things. Well, it's gonna it's gonna be tough now. Looking at the split. There's a really aggressive shot on John, but oh goodness me, the risks involved. You know. Come in to the split here, he can get across to the red ball, take that out. Yeah, His own ball would force its way through. One would disappear, green ball, well that would disappear, but the red ball would stay in. It's going to be difficult to, to get more than one out of this. A lot of arrows there, Dave. <laughs> and, okay. and many more I could have added. It's like a western. On that shot, so many things has got to go right. Well, he's playing for it. One out, didn't make any difference. That was second shot. He needed the inside ball to do something. Now, there's a measure for the second one because that was second, but I think it's just the one. Umpire. Yeah. Calling for the umpire, I think that's uh, more, more in hope, to be honest with you, than anything else, John. Yeah, at this stage, he's got to try if he any doubt. I think he's being optimistic. You can't blame him for that. Just too many things had to go right on that strike, really. It does happen, but not when he wanted to. <laughs> what can happen by accident? Alan Thornhill will sort this out pretty quickly, and he's very fast on the green ball. Gives you the impression that it's definitely red. One shot, give a good. Set score eight five after eight tenths. <coughs> Jack Mank, twenty seven and a half meters. So, if you want to ask any questions for myself or John Price, hashtag BBC Bowls and hashtag Ask Corky. No 
always getting messages in different forms. We'll do our best to answer them. Difficult to pick up a three, John, isn't it, when you really need it? Yeah, I think you would have preferred the first ball, obviously either take to the jack or just pass the jack. Good ball from Greg, and it's going to make it very difficult. And there it is. Yes, it's right. a, another round that closed down, okay. isn't it? Two inch gap. And uh, every mistake that David makes will be punished. Second ball is short, it's really a little bit far away. This needs to reach. Certainly better. Oh, I'm absolutely, it's better. Nearly got a little touch on the front. Well, yeah. That gives him a chance. Yeah, it's a good ball. That's where you would have wanted the second one. Interesting to see if Greg sticks with the backhand following this ball just going across the head. Lovely shoulder now, John, on the forehand. Yeah, he's going to go to the forehand side. If he gets to those green balls, it'll probably kill it off for David. An opportunity yep. there. Ball out clean, turn of the jack. It's a draw, really, John, because if you put the extra weight on, it'll just whiz past. Yeah, he doesn't need a lot on his last ball, David. the extra weight he put on and it just drift past all shot, day long. First set, Greg Harlan. I think that's a fair reflection in many ways, John, because Greg was just that bit more consistent than David. David missed a, a lot of second balls falling short. Yeah, not a great deal in the set, but I think you're right there. I think Greg probably deserved the win. He was a little bit more consistent and he looked a little bit more dangerous than David as far as uh, getting a count, especially in the early stages. You see by the length of Jack, as expected. David going a bit longer. Greg round about that sort of 26, 27. Been very consistent with the jack around that length. Just had the edge on the first set. Jack length, 27 metres. That really, as we said, David, it often is def des decided on a, a four or a three, and that big full house was the important end, wasn't it? The key end. The key end. Right. 
Good start by David Gooley here. David Gurley, the cap, three and a half inch cap. In the first round, won his first set. The second round, he drew the first set. Quarter finals, he lost it to Catherine Rednell, and now he's lost it again. Bit of a pattern, but it's downhill. So he's uh, used to fighting out the second set. That second ball again, I, I just think if he could just get that past, puts him in a good position. Shake of the head, I think he agrees with me. <laughs> Always frustrating, you know where you want to put it. Some days it just doesn't happen. Exactly. <coughs> One great. That's a target bow now for David, get inside that bow. Funny how patterns appear when it comes to sets play. First draw, first end of the second set can often be a bit of a tricky one, but David's well in there. When we look at Greg, he's done exactly the same as what David has done. Never too, Greg. On the first set in the first round, drew the second set in the second round. Quarterfinals, lost the first set. That was to Stuart Anderson, but came back strong in the second. <coughs> Given a time. Very close. Doesn't want the jack on the flop. Bye bye. It's a walking certainty, isn't it? Yeah, it was a good ball. Couldn't do much better than that, really. Nearly draw through the shot, and it's just that fall back. It's always going to happen if you fall back against it. One green. A lot of slower indoor carpets, and certainly outdoors, that jack would have clung on to the bowl. Just bounces quite a bit on the portable rink. I was happy enough to take the, take the shot, David Gurley. And the card? One shot, David Gurley. Very sensible, not a lot of room to add a, a spare Six shot. Six zero, one after one end. Questions have been coming in. Do the players own their own bowls or are they using or are they supplied by World Bowls in Oakham? Some players at the very top have their own bowls, but strangely, John, you'll confirm this as well. Quite often they swap bowls. Yes, they do. I mean, I think uh, Greg Harlow played with a set that Nicky Brett had, yeah, his friend and meters. partner, obviously, in the last round. You do find that most of the top players have got uh, models in green and red. Obviously, some of the players are involved with both companies, work for them, some are not. So somebody coming here for the first time, a qualifier, might not have a green or red set. There are bowls here that can be used in quite a good variety normally. Yes, all the four manufacturers are represented, but different sizes, different strengths of bias. Very, very strict rules this year on using different bowls. That's what you would expect. I think really this year it's been a fairly gotcha. easy decision because the most of the players have used quite a wide swinging bowl. In other years when the green is very fast and it can be, um, it's a tougher call, isn't it, Dave, what you use. Some players will try a number of sets during practice, even change from round to round models. Absolutely. David Gurley, well, this is his best end for a while. First ball on the jack. Now he's getting a second ball in. That's much more like David Gurley. Yeah, 
think that will invite the, the running ball. Absolutely. You know, it's, uh, they're too tight, Greg. I want to move those. He's in the area. It's all on connections. Whew, not the best on that one. Miss it was good. Hit it solid was good. Yeah, this is probably the result he definitely didn't want. That edge off the red. Nothing on the green now. Definitely advantage Goulet on this end so far and set up by a good two first balls. Sticking on the backhand side. There's going to be another one coming in here, it's number three. Greg will have to draw because he's nothing on the rink. Yeah, that's good. Couldn't do any more than that, David Gulley. Greg okay. draws a shot, you just got to put your hands up and said, well, well he's, played. He's on the inside of the mat, he's going again. Oh, another what runner. I, what he's trying to do is get the jack on the re-spot for his last ball. Or, in this case, the jack in the ditch will do. I thought he might have drawn that to give himself some sort of a chance to get the shot, but uh, that will work. Well, he was confident on making the adjustment on the strike. He had to make sure he connected on that occasion. So a little mark on the ditch just to show where the jack is. And uh, David just asking for the umpire to move across because he wanted to see the peg extremity of the rink. That's where he's aiming from. Which is the closest of those two. Yeah. That's very good. No, it's a good ball. It's a very good ball. Greg's asking now if that's uh, one or two. Very close, Greg. Very close. Very close. Okay, well. At that distance, I'm not surprised. In particular, when you're dropping down into the ditch, that's a few more inches to the distance. But uh, I think Greg will draw second, definitely. It's whether he'll just manage to get to the edge of the ditch. He's normally very good at this. Yep, just sneaked in. Yeah, two good balls. Good strike with the third. Good adjustment to the draw with the fourth. Goodness me, he got out of jail though, John. One shot. He? Yeah, he's really gambled on the third one. He score, thought one, he could one hit it. Two ends. Just enough to get in front, but that's all you need. Game management from Greg Harlow. Took the risk with the third drive and a uh, third ball drive. If you missed that, he was in a heap of trouble. As it is, a single score. Jack, 27 meters. Goal level. Why is it three metres from the ditch to the tee instead of the normal two metres indoor and outdoor? Good question, Don. Well, when it was, the respots were being introduced, I decided that two metres and then bringing back a little bit for the respot just really didn't have enough space to make it uh, viable. I know they use it in the indoor for a lot of clubs, so decided on three metres. And then instead of going level with the jack, I made midpoint between jack and the edge of the rink and they dropped it back 30 centimeters or a foot interesting committee meeting for that one can't remember if i was there or not certainly hope not but it has been followed with the mainstream too ready 
And it's, it's changed things quite dramatically. The Your last positions. ball is two feet behind. A lot of players relied on their drive and uh, certainly affected international bowls quite considerably. But it's, uh, it's not liked by everybody. Three red. Strange when these loose ends are thrown in, John. Yeah, there hasn't been too many. That's a danger. You can drop a count on the loose end. Well, if, if there's been any failing in David's game today, it's been really on those short balls. He, he's just played too many of them. A let off. Yeah, I'd be disappointed he didn't get closer with that. Still a chance for David to save this. The only thing I can think of is that there's different paces on different lines on that backhand. It's better with so this, surely. Will he run? Not much. Drag in. Yep, it's enough for second, maybe, but if he drops away, it could be a double. Looks good for second as long as it doesn't move. Oh, drop back. It's the extra shot now. It's a 30 second rule. Yep. That one's not in. Well, Greg's looking for the measure now. Tape for the third one. Maybe we should explain the 30 second rule for a lot of non bowlers. It's uh, forward movement, stops. Two on red. the last ball of the end, and then the rules say you're allowed 30 seconds if there's any sign of the ball moving. And that's exactly what happened there. Yeah. It's cost David Gurley another shot. Go to one ball, go back to... The the original ball, of course, after you've measured the red one, just to make sure nothing slipped. Two shots, great harder. What we expected. Set score, 3 1 off the three. Beautiful hits. trophy for this event. It's massive as well. It's gigantic. Jack Link, 24 and a half meters. a lot better, good start again. Made a good end in this direction, the last end. I'd like to do the same now. Greg getting away in the set.
Just sneaked in. Two green. Good ball. A couple of hands ago, he did exactly the same. He got his first two balls in. Greg had to attack John. But the. Uh, uh, been signs of David just coming together a bit more with the little battle of the first two balls. Needs to keep that going to keep Greg at bay. Yeah, this is the next two deliveries important here for this end up. And Greg is looking to get in this. Anything splitting the greens. Second or shot. Overplayed it. Will he get back? Not far away. Two green. Pity, really. We could have closed the door then. Yeah. That needed to be, if anything, a foot short to force Greg on the other side. Now it's a slight adjustment on his previous ball. And he's holding that tight line. It's in the area. Weight's good. Yeah. And he's got it this time. He made that adjustment. Fancy he would after the third delivery, and that's a great ball by Greg Harlow. Oh, right. oh, it's, uh, David just gave him too many chances, that's all. He didn't close the door. Yeah, even a, a ball two feet down would have forced Greg to change, and unfortunately made that adjustment from David's point of view, but it's, it's a great ball. Where, where it's due. Yep, you still have to play it. That's the point. And he's played it to perfection, forced David onto the forehand, and that's not easy. Yes, he tried to steer that in a little bit. Missed the line. One shot, Greg Harlow. Set the mm. score, 4 1 after four ends. It's twice in this direction, Greg's been in a heap of trouble, and he's got himself out of it. And scored both times with singles, so it's impressive when you do that. It's almost going against the flow of the balls. But like in football, John, where you've got a lot of possession, but you don't uh, you don't score the shots. Jack Lane, score the goals. Meters. Yeah, David played two good ends in that direction. Hasn't scored them, as he said. He's got to be patient, though, Keep trying to play the balls. There's nothing much you can do. Everybody will know when your opponent plays a good ball. Just got to say, well, you know, it's a good ball. And Yep, move on. Move on. Give him a chance here now. Set it up again. Always feel if you knock at the door long enough, at some point you're going to get a result. Just got to keep trying to put the balls there. Very good, good start. Now then, little opportunity here. safe line here it comes all the way back in Chigri. Greg Hollow's missed the line and the weight with it. so he's going to have to correct both he's on the other side of the mat this time that means he can take a wider line with the ball and more of a dip back still inside David Gurley's line but Does hold it on the backhand a little bit. Yep, there's the recovery one. One red. So just pass the jet. 
Yes. Three and a half inches past jack eye. David just likes to see that peg side of the rink. Extra rate jump. Yeah, once you start going out there and you're playing a couple of metres, two or three metres away, you're never going to get down. Well, you go chasing on the inside, you need a lot more weight because it dives away very quickly. For another close ball here, Greg. Bit of insurance in the end. Certainly better, he's fallen in. Less of a target. Yes, yeah, so it's close it. for two. That's what David really was looking for with his ball, but Greg played it with a lot less weight. Time I call. David has three time at remaining. He's taking a look at this, he may play a little bit more direct at this. The back ball. Do you think you look at this, David, down the backhand side for well, the two reds, and if he gets one of the greens into the jack, he might get a result. The problem is the front red ball. Yeah. Could play it off the forehand. Could do. You know, he has to miss that just about to get the inside of the ball. As you say, John, there's a shot on the forehand. He can get into his own, maybe get a result. Backhand's not very appetizing. You know, he's moved to the fours. So. More of a percentage shot. Yeah, he's looking for that shot that I said into the front bowl, into the jack. Wow, that was a good effort. Bowl on the jack to get a double. Two shots, Great Harlow. Set score, 6-1 after five ends. Length, 28 and a half metres. See the little white dots there, they're a metre apart and that helps the umpire to count whenever the mat is put down just to check the jack lengths. Makes it quicker, makes it easier and also of course for straightening the jack it makes things a lot faster. Some people might argue that it gives a line, John, for people to play a drive ball. Helps them. We find it on the greens in Australia, outdoor greens, David, as you know. Being out there, they have a chalk line down the middle. That's for similar sort of purposes, spot yes. on the jack. And the way they do it is they run a block of chalk down a rope, keep it tight, and then just lifts it up a foot or so and flicks it down and that puts the chalk line on. That's what the green keepers do. Oh, and it's fallen in as well. That's a, a bonus. Getting to the point of no return here for David Gould in this sand. He certainly needs to score. Well, he knows he has to reach the red ball, the shot ball, at the very least. Just very slightly over the line. The weight was good. One or two, please. The ends are starting to come away a little bit, John. He's very close for second. No measure. One red and measure. Greg weathered the storm on a couple of big ends. 
where David was lying multiples and managed to pick up singles. And on the other end, well, he's just been that little bit more consistent. Yeah, he's playing down on the backhand side, but he'd be looking just to get past you. Not bad. You know, will David be tempted with this on the forehand to run the jack through? He can see it from the mat. Once again, a difficult shot. And just over the draw, try and pick it up for a double. He'll fight it. Needs a big edge or something. It's not well. It's put a ball in the back, so Greg will cover now. It's yeah, it's not bad. He's pushed that yeah. ball through, so he's, he's developed it a little bit. It's still there for him if he wants to try and bring the jack through on the forehand. Fully expect Greg now to try and split the two greens or even get deeper. Onto his forehand side. Let's get back and cover those position balls at the back. Pretty good that. I think David has to go for this. He, he needs to score this end. He is wide. He could very well get a, a good shoulder off his short ball, David. Back into it and get a result. More direct this time. Let's pass the front. Yeah. Just looked a little bit on the inside. The ends are sliding away. One shot, Greg Harlan. Set score, seven one after six ends. Good intentions there, but he just didn't execute right. He inside the line on the way down. More chances on the high side off the green ball. It'll be tough from here to get back. Oh, it will be. David, by his own admission, has said he hasn't really played Jack Lake, 29 to the height of his game in this event. But he's managed to get his way through to the semi-final, but he's on the wrong end of a very much in form Greg Harlow. Greg scores a double here. It's all over. help down there when you're looking for a count John. No, it's not a lot, it's, it's a couple of feet all the time sometimes. He's played some really good first balls but there's been a little bit of inconsistency as you said and you'll know that. Okay Steve is very honest about uh, his standard of play. He would have expected a little bit more in this match. Uh, Greg's looking to get to the jack now. Just every time he's built something up Greg has managed to cancel it out. So, uh, Greg's ball, 22 inches short of Jack High. We've said before, he's normally, Greg, very good at closing out matches from this position. David needs a couple this end. And so any realistic chance on the last two ends. It's a better ball there, gives him a, an opportunity. Chicken head again. He thought that was close, and it uh, went through through the head. He's struggling a bit out there, but trying to scratch something out of this match. Just giving Greg too many chances sometimes. Greg plays a couple of loose balls. 
What's the position, please? No, he's got a chance, a real chance. And Greg's failed with his third One delivery. Way. This needs to be good. Change under the forehand, yeah. Sensible. Oh, he certainly looked like he pushed that through, John, because a lot of balls have been dropping short on the forehand. Has he missed his line or is he okay? He's a jack. Oh, he's too quick. By some distance, my goodness me. Oh, that's nearly two metres through. Greg draws with this one. It's all over. It's a, a horrid end by David Gurley. Just hasn't got the grips. So Greg can add this. Now, David's got the last ball, but if he puts this really close, he'll hold a... A match light. This is struggling. Oh my goodness. All right. Oh, There's wow. still a chance here for David Gooley. Oh, what a chance to put the pressure on to win the set, John. Yeah, but I just can't believe that. He can't believe it. Still running. And he's dropped back in. I don't know if that's made a difference. It was a good metre through with that one. He's got the one out of it, I think. Yep. One shot. David Gurley. That was a scrappy oh. old end. Set score 7 2 after 7 eights. Players offered up so many chances there, John. That was a nervy end, and not like the two players, to be fair. They normally get in with their third or their fourth one. Jack Knight, 26 and a half metres. I think a, a five shot lead, which effectively for David Gurley is a six shot lead because he has to win the set, he can't just draw it. Close an end down, John. It doesn't get much better than this, does it? No, and when you look at those One two red. balls and you think they toiled a bit on the last end and then the opening two deliveries are like that, it's very difficult to explain, isn't it? Requirement for David Gooley's two shots to take it into the last end. Oh, he's right in here again. Tap the ball, it might fall away. One red. Still one to red. That's really good though from Greg. It's closing down the end. Time out call. David has two time outs remaining. David Gurley's on the inside line here to try and make a disturbance if he can. Needs to shuffle things around, but 
he's dropping short, John. It's, it just hasn't has been just hasn't been his day, has it? No, and he's not left himself too many options. That's the problem. I mean, I can't see Greg going near this, to be honest with you. Well, there is a shot on for David. We'll check it out after Greg's bowl, but it's a tough eight. Time out call. Greg has two timeouts remaining. Greg has the last ball on this end as well, so even if David does get into it, he's got a, a way to solve the problem. So, out wide. I think he was just trying to get past the green ones. I can't see the jack going forward, to be honest. Just uh, didn't push it through. David's got a shot, red ball on the green, lock solid on it, he might pick up a three, he has to play it, he's no choice. It's a match lie against him. He's trying to flick the ball out on the forehand. Oh, again, <laughs> it just went all wrong anyway. But he's got, uh, maybe got a single out of it, but that's not enough. They'll check for a two. Greg's got the last ball to draw now. Time out called. Greg has one time out remaining. I think really here, John, he's got the wonderful advantage of being able to play a shot and there's absolutely no danger whatsoever. Well, you know, I think he's just drawing, isn't he? Yep, David? just draw the shot. If he makes it, he, he makes it. And if it's only one shot, he still wins the match anyway. That's more than good enough. Second shot. One shot, David Gerda. Second set match, Greg Harlow. An interesting game, John, but didn't really reach the heights we were hoping for. No, that really took off. It was a solid performance from Greg. He was the better player on the day and deserved to go through. Yeah, so Greg just had the edge on David Gurley in this match and that will be reflected just some of the shots he played. First set, of course, 9-5 and uh, really did look good in that first one. David Gurley came back at him in the second set, but Greg was able to get out of trouble and there were a couple of counts against him with really good goals, both drawing and playing weight. See the ends one slightly in favour of Greg. Not much, but that also reflects where he's picking up the doubles and the four in the first in particular scored shot scored. Well, yes, easy enough there. But we were hoping for a really good game. David Gurley started off well, picking up a two in the second end. Greg picked up a four in the fifth end and that really broke the back of the first set. It was a loose one in terms of David Gurley's play, but it was a nice one in terms of the way Greg played it. And then David Gurley started to lie a few shots, but he just brought the jack into the open in that end, gave Greg a chance. And that wasn't the first time in the game, but whenever David was loose, Greg was getting in there. again another one dropping in that was a double in the end but just too strong on the day just wasn't really David Gurley at his full height 
Congratulations then to Greg Harlow through to the final tomorrow against Mark Dawes. Disappointment for you, David. Uh, was it simply you put that down to just one of those days where hard though you tried, Greg had the answers? Yeah, look, I, th I think, uh, you know, Greg, Greg th thoroughly deserved the win. You know, any time I did look at maybe getting a couple, you know, he'd pull a, a, a good ball and, and sort of nail it down. But, you know, we were both sort of struggling for our weight. Mm. Uh, but we had flashes of good ends and then... Uh, Flash is a bad end and Greg had more good ends than me. Yeah. yeah, how do you sum up the experience that you've had uh, at Potters this year? Yeah, look, it's, yeah, it's been just, it's just been weird, you know, it's been a great privilege we've been given, you know, to, to take part and for this event to run, you know, so we're all really honoured that we've been given that privilege. Obviously, you know, personally I felt really safe, really secure, mm. just unfortunate, you know, we were almost over the line. You know, but yeah, it's, it's mixed emotions, to be honest. Mixed emotions, I can definitely understand that. But very well done. You should be proud of uh, the performance here Thank this you. week. Uh, we're going to let you go. I'm going to concentrate chatting away to, to Greg. And, and first of all, Greg, get your reaction. It's your first final since 2017, if my calculations are right? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. Yes. Obviously, absolutely delighted uh, to be in the final. As David said, it's just bizarre. The end of the game, the shots normally getting shouted in and cheered <laughs> in. And, yeah. you, you know, you're getting your adrenaline really pumped then obviously you finish the game and it's just like oh okay yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's very very bizarre we're going to have a look back at some of the, the key moments uh, one okay. of the things that David mentioned in that interview was the fact that there were moments where he would put a couple of bowls in but then he couldn't quite kill it off and you would produce what you had to yeah I, I you know obviously I've played David many many times and I know if David puts his first two in he's going to put it three and four in um, so I, you know I tend to attack even my second third or fourth bowl just to try and reduce and you know tr you know try not to drop threes and fours that's yeah. that's the answer if you drop ones and twos you're in the game um, but I also played some pretty good drawing stuff as well. So overall, I'm quite happy. Well, you said all along that to win this title, you've got to draw well. It's the combination. Obviously, you need to draw well. You need to set yourselves up. But on the ends that you don't and, and the opposition dominate you like David did on a few ends, you've got to be able to get out of trouble. So, And you, you've got to be able to play that shot. Obviously, yeah. if you miss, you've got to take the consequences as well. Early thoughts on, on playing Mark tomorrow? Obviously, he, he's had a day of chilling well, out. <laughs> do, you, do you know, I, I don't actually think we've played in singles. That's incredible. I, I, I might be wrong because my memory's not brilliant. I'm getting on a little bit, Rishi, as you know now. But, <laughs> I'm um, right behind you. We, play, we played in pairs, but I don't actually think we've played on the World Bowl. Wow. Store. We've played in other, other events, but I don't think we've actually played on the World Bowl store. Probably get to the bar and he'll tell me we've played five or six <laughs> times and he's beaten me four to one, but I, I can't remember playing. Yeah, well, he'll probably put the head-to-head -head slightly in his favour. Yeah, I'm does. sure he will. Uh, Greg, massive congratulations. Thank Looking you. forward to seeing you in the final tomorrow. So well done. To Scotland. Oh, the most titles. I'm going to go with Scotland. Scotland! I'll go for England. Oh, that's easy. Scotland. <laughs> That's all we've got time for today, ladies and gentlemen, from Potter's Resort. So until tomorrow, it's a good night. God bless everybody.